Welcome back everybody. So this week we're making a main dish. It is called the Dijon chicken. It is a recipe that was given to me by a student of ours called David and someone that happened to meet in person at our latest book signing event in Melbourne. Here's the book and thank you very much for all the amazing review you all left. So David told me that this was from an old book from Audrey Ellis uh, that actually I didn't know and he sent me an extract and this is some of the text he sent me and why I shouldn't make that recipe. It is of course from Dijon. Dijon is the place where we make the mustard so when you see a Dijon chicken it's gonna mean a chicken coming with a creamy mustard sauce and you got the chicken version you can have the veal version the pork version what I like this is a very simple home friendly types of recipe it's gonna be perfect for me to showcase that beautiful saute pan and to have that one pot dish we're gonna be sauté the chicken make the sauce all in one it's gonna be beautiful let's go the great thing about that recipe is that everything is really kept to a minimum or what you're going to need is some uh, chicken you can use just chicken tight or breast i just break down a chicken in four pieces on here salt and pepper on either side and if you want you can actually cover or dust uh, slightly the chicken with flour which is what i like to do because it removes the moisture and too much moisture on the skin or anything can really have the chicken to stick and when you cook it we're going to cook it in butter but for the rest all what you need is a bit of wine some cream some mustard and two egg yolks to bind the sauce so it is going to be very very straightforward now let's jump straight into the recipe so let's begin this is the pan i was talking about it is the Moviel series with the cast iron endo full copper high gauge and we're going to start with 40 grams of butter you can use oil and butter if you want uh, but i like to use plenty of butter and just really tastes better i'm going to start to cook this skin side first and another one Hopla. now one of the things that i like with this copper series compared to the stainless steel series that i've got is that even if the pan that you have is crowded like this and you need to color your chicken on either side because of the copper conducting the heat that well, even using a medium to medium high heat, I can just be patient and it will start to color and not lose the heat. I really like that feature because with the stainless steel, I have to say it was either super, super high heat and I, things were about to burn and stick or medium heat and things were just boiling. So the copper pan in terms of performance, they do show an absolute improvement. So it's been a bit more than five minutes and the proof is in the pudding. What I'm saying about these pans, let's have a look at this coloration. Look at that. See what I mean? And that one, the chicken breast. Look at this color. So I'm just going to turn them over and repeat the same coloring on the other side. So the first part is done. I've colored my chicken on either side. I've started to add just bay leaves and a bit of dry thyme in there. You could add a bit of garlic a bit of shallot, but this recipe doesn't have anything. All what it relies on is the souk and this coloration of the caramelized juices of the chicken at the bottom of the pan. There's a little bit of butter left and we're going to deglaze with wine and braise the chicken. You don't want to soak the dish. It's going to be more like a braise, like a shallow braising. So we've got barely 200 ml and that's about it. Okay, that's going to start to boil. And all what you have to do from here is to put a lid on and Continue to cook this for 20-25 minutes or you know as long as it takes for your pieces to be ready. Now remember, depending on the size of your chicken, it may take shorter or a longer time. The breast, uh, if you want, you can take them out before. If you are scared they're gonna be overcooked, but this is the standard for chicken. So I'm just gonna cover the lid. Okay, we're gonna cook the chicken and when it's done, we're gonna finish the sauce and that's gonna be it. We're ready, the chicken is now cooked. If you're unsure about uh, you know, your chicken, if it's cooked or not, use a food thermometer and the information given on the screen to know uh, the safe temperature uh, when it comes to the chicken. Make sure you preheat your oven at 50 degrees Celsius to keep the chicken warm. And all what I'm gonna do is turn my heat off for the moment. I'm gonna scoop out my chicken, reserve it in a tray on the side, cover it with foil and place it in the oven while we make the sauce. So first thing first, I've removed my aromatics and this is what I've got in my pan. There's a lot of things floating around, there's pieces of chicken, pieces of thyme. So the first thing I'm gonna do, also because I'm using a really nice pan, I'm gonna filter my sauce using a small sieve into another container, clean my pan and put everything back so we can start on the clean base. Look at this, fresh clean pan. I've got now my uh, sauce. I could remove the excess of fat, but as per his coffee, I'm gonna leave all the taste in there, some impurities, and first bring this to a boil. My cooking juices are boiling now. I've just used the right amount, so I'm pretty much done in here. I'm going to be able to add the cream, but if you have too much wine, if it's very, very high, you're going to need to reduce it until the, the juice is here. If you taste it, 
it must be slightly acidic but tastes strongly of chicken. From here, you can add the cream. And what you, how much you add, you can add anywhere between 100 to 200 ml, depending on how you like the cream. I like to have plenty of cream. And this is the point where you can adjust the cream and you can boil your mixture. Once the mustard is in and the eggs are in, you cannot boil your sauce anymore. So all the reduction part happen now. Okay, first with the wine and then with the cream. I've reduced my cream for about one or two minutes and this is the amount of sauce I have for 200 ml of cream. The cream coats my spoon nicely. The original recipe says to add the cream, the mustard and the egg yolks together. I tend to differ because if you do that, it's very hard to then reduce and adjust the consistency of your sauce. So I will recommend first add the cream, reduce, get the consistency, then do your binding. That's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to put some of this sauce in a bowl with the egg yolks and mix everything in. So this is a typical velouté process. Have you got your base of the sauce? I've got, I've got my egg yolk and I'm going to mix everything together first. Okay. And then put this into my sauce. You can use a whisk if you want. You can use a spoon. There is no boiling that's happening. I'm going to add the mustard as well after because I want to control. It's all about control, sauce making. I want to control the taste of the mustard. And then we have the finishing touch with the seasoning and cayenne pepper. So there we have it, beautiful sauce. I've turned my heat off for the time being and now it's gonna be time to add the mustard. It is up to you. How much mustard do you want? This is a Dijon style, so it's meant to have lots of mustard. I'm gonna add first a tablespoon, mix, taste, and then see if I need more. So the first thing I'm gonna do is try. And you see for me, one tablespoon, a hip tablespoon of mustard is enough. If you like, you can put more. And so the last touch is gonna be, the seasoning is fine, I think there's enough salt. I'm using white pepper, by the way, and here I'm using espelette pepper instead of uh, the cayenne pepper. But again, you know, that's a personal choice. And I think I'm going to add a touch of white pepper. This time people have been telling, oh, why are you using always black pepper? It's because I don't have the fresh white pepper beans or peppercorns all the time. Okay, we've got the sauce ready. We can now warm it up slightly. And the effect here is the same as a custard. We're going to turn the heat on very, very low. Keep on stirring the whole thing and par cook the eggs, which is going to thicken the sauce. This is the process of making a velouté based on egg yolk. Okay, and as soon as it's after a minute or something or two, I'm adding the chicken and we serve. For the chicken, it was the same. We add first the leftover cooking juices. Give this a stir very slightly in there. Chicken is going in one by one. And there we have it, we've got the beautiful sauce ready. The chicken is in, it's all matter of serving, so we can use another dish, you can drench in sauce, or just put the chicken on top of the sauce, it's up to you. What I'm gonna do here is a little tasting, and then we're gonna wrap up the video. Time for the tasting. So what I've done here, I've got a mash on the side, because I thought the mash could be good, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna use it. I've got a piece of chicken on here, and I've got the sauce. Now, you know the, the thing I've said, you can drench this over. It's not a problem. I'm going to drench it over, but I'm not sure about the cayenne pepper with the mustard, if that is perhaps going to be making a bit of a clash. Huh? So the sauce is totally thickened. That the amount of mustard you put, if you make that dish, is going to be really, um, it's going to depend on your taste. So if you like it really, really mustardy, you're going to add more, but I think it is definitely a comfort dish. You know, I mean, you got that creamy, thick sauce, Look at the chicken, nice and moist. It's one of those things, the more you eat it, you're like, oh, can I, can I try again? Can I? <laughs> a bit more sauce, so, yeah. As David said, I think as a family dish, definitely everybody's gonna enjoy that. I'm enjoying it. I love the simplicity, I love the taste. It's full, it's rich, and it really works, bravo. Well, the taste of that velouté still lingers on my palate. So thank you very much, David, to bring me this recipe uh, you know, to my attention. It's a classic recipe, but I think this simplified version is going to help a lot of people out there. It is a family dish. It is a comfort dish and something that really does not require many ingredients and deliver on taste. Pairing, absolutely. Mashed potato is great. A glass of white wine. I'm having a Chardonnay here. It works perfectly. In another note, we've got a new tea on our Patreon page. We've revamped the Patreon. Now you can see how videos totally ad-free in 4K and also have a free pass 
to get access to our French Cooking Academy Club. The club is the place where all the chatting happening, all the students, we've got 750 people in there. You can talk with me all the time in real time. I'm answering questions, we're interacting, we're posting stuff. It's a lot of fun, so check it out. As for me, I will see you next week with another video. We're doing a side dish next week with something a bit different. So if you want to continue on learning and cooking some French dishes, go back to the channel and I'll see you all next week. Take care all, bye-bye. Don't leave me